Hey everybody, this is Zachary Gaines and let's keep walking through the Bible. So today is day 63 and uh, we are going through the very end of chapter 1 of Luke. We're going to be covering uh, the birth of John the Baptist and Zechariah's prophecy when his mouth, you know, when he can actually talk again. Can you imagine how weird that would be? It's almost like that uh, movie uh, thing of the Matrix, you know, when Neo gets pulled in. Maybe maybe some of you guys have never seen The Matrix. That's fine. But he, uh, they take him. These agents take this guy into a room, and reality gets really weird. And they say, "Well, what if you couldn't talk?" And then all of a sudden, there's kind of like skin over his mouth. He's talking to rock, and he can't talk. Now, granted, I think Zachariah's mouth was not covered in a, you know something but he just he couldn't talk couldn't say anything so anyway um why don't we why don't we pray and uh and uh let's get going so lord we love you god you're ne you never cease to amaze me god thank you for delivering um people god that one person that i was praying for lord you uh You've delivered partially, God, from a very dangerous and scary situation. God, I pray for her and her um, children that you would fully deliver her. God, that you'd help her be wise as a serpent and peaceful as a dove. God, give her boldness where she needs boldness and humility where she needs humility. Give her resources, God, that she needs and uh, protect her, protect her from the enemy. Lord, please open up our hearts and our minds to you. And we ask that in your holy name, Jesus, amen. Yeah, so I have a friend that I've known for a long, long time who's in a far, far away place and has been there as a missionary for a long time and, and married somebody in country and it didn't go good. There was a, um, and it's not because he's from another country, it's just he, he flipped the script on what he had been before and became a not nice person. Um, and then the country and the courts tried to take her kids away, even though she had legal custody and they, and then she had to flee. And uh, this is a person who had to hide, like live in hiding out in the African bush for months with her daughters. So I know God's got his hand on her, um, but that doesn't mean that all stories in with like a, you know, having cookies at a desk in America, drinking a cup of coffee. We're really blessed on this planet that this is the world we get to live in. But she also is blessed because the rewards that she is and the witness that she is giving to those in those places and those back here is incredible. So, anyway. I know that's a long intro. But please pray for her, but pray also for you know if you know any missionaries and you haven't thought about them in a while take a second and pray for them so anyway Heather made chocolate chip cookies she's amazing verse 57 now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth and she bore a son and her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. And on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child. And they would have called him Zechariah after his father, but his mother answered, No, he shall be called John. And they said to her, None of your relatives is called by this name. And they made signs to his father, Zechariah, inquiring what he wanted him to be called. 
and he asked for a writing, writing tablet, and he wrote, his name is John, and they all wondered. And immediately his mouth was opened, and his tongue loosed, and he spoke, blessing God, and fear came on all their neighbors, and all these things were talked about through all the hill country of Judea. And all who heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What then will this child be? For the hand of the Lord was with him. I think it's really important to, again, remember how, like, afflicted people's emotions were towards Zechariah and Elizabeth off and on for I mean years and years and years there was always the thing about how she and him didn't have kids and he was serving in the ministry and how could you possibly serve in the ministry and you know and not be blessed with God by God with a kid and always bringing these kids you know maybe she again maybe she got pregnant a number of times and they didn't make it And then lo and behold, he comes back from his service. And maybe this was his last service. It, it kind of appears that that's what happened. Like this was it. This was his last run down to the temple with his group. And he comes back and he can't talk. And everybody's talking about him. The guy who can't talk. Thought he saw a ghost in there. So he comes back to the village and then she ducks away for five months and is more or less just hiding out. Won't let anybody see her. Zechariah picking up food. The guy can't talk anymore for months. Yeah, I mean, this family has got to seem like everybody around him is like, well, I don't know about them. How quick we are to go to judgment. How quick I am. I, I have got to be a person that gives people some grace. God knows he's given me grace. So whenever we're dealing with people who who have different lifestyles and different choices and even shake their fist at the things you love or even at you, just remember, like I remember, I was one of, I was one of those people. I did not grow up in the church. Most of you who are my family know that. I did not grow up in the church. I used to mock and deride the person that I had become. Um, thank God. So anyway, especially those now in the body. So they made a couple decisions that you didn't dig. And I'm not talking about capital 10, top 10 sins, okay? And even then, if they ask for forgiveness, we're supposed to forgive them, okay? But like, if somebody's got a character flaw, cut them some slack, right? I mean, Zechariah, mute. God used even this thing, which was a minor judgment against his lack of faith in the temple. He used as a massive miracle moment for all these people who are like, wondering why Zechariah is you know, mouth is shut up and he can't talk. And then lo and behold, his mouth opens. He clarifies, yeah, it's John. And then ostensibly we're going to read what he, what God gave him as a prophetic word that was just bound up inside him. And God just let it out. So. And his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit. And he prophesied saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. The oath that he swore to our father Abraham 
to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear. In holiness and righteousness before him all of our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the sunrise will visit us from on high, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the pathway of peace. Man, that's good. And the child grew and became strong in spirit. And he was in the wilderness until the day of his public appearance to Israel. Man. Happy is the Lord God of Israel. Blessed. We always think of like incense, you know, holy water, blessed, you know, like it's a, it's an ordination of sorts. And, and there is that context, but the word underlying blessed is always has the context of joy, happiness, how happy, how joyful, how blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Why? For he has visited and redeemed his people. Why is God happy? Because his promise that he made from way back in the day, he's bringing about, there's a bright sunrise coming. Bright sunrise. Don't you love it? Because the tender mercy of our God whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high. So here's my personal challenge to you. Pick up your Bible, okay, after I close, and I want you to read through his prophetic word. And let, let each phrase turn, like I was pointing out there a little bit, um, let each phrase catch you for a second, okay? I read through it, but it's it, these phrases, these promises, what images do they bring? Just this ever-increasing, beautiful, warm sunrise lighting upon a dark and sinful earth. And think of a real sunrise or you know, on Facebook, one of your favorite, you know, sunrise pictures and sit with that verse and look at that picture and sit with that verse and look at that picture. Okay. It's a good thing. God's giving us these images. You don't have to conjure them all up. You know, you can, you can remember he's reminding us to like make a strong connection with reality. The things that he is saying to describe stuff that's beyond our reality. And it's also the reason, you know, people held these things in their heart. And it's also the reason why so many people struggled with this concept that, you know, John the Baptist, Elijah, promise comes and, and Jesus, the anointed one, the Messiah, he comes and didn't automatically deliver. But the, there was a staged second component to this story. The first and foremost come and deliver the message through the people of Israel and the, share that message of salvation of God's incredible mercy to the world. And it really bummed people out because they didn't have a vision of what all of us have gotten over the last 2000 years. Like it, it was so not possible for them to even begin to imagine where we were going as a world back then. And they'd been promised some old promises. And when they had been dead, these promises had been basically dead for 
well over 400 years. There was some activity, you know, that's where we get Hanukkah, you know, a couple hundred years before that or whatever, you know, where the oil didn't run out and the lamp stayed on. Uh, but outside of that, I mean, there, there really wasn't hiding or tail of any miraculous anything. And the Bible had truly become to them just an order of procedure. And there were levels of authority and they were governed by an authority an authority that was of the world and blasphemous, the Romans. And so when Jesus shows up and it's all getting legit and John the Baptist shows up and it's all real, they're like, this is it. And then they're let down because it didn't happen like they thought it should happen. Even though Jesus told them this is not how it's going down. So... You think about those words that Zechariah prophesied and people, you know, stowed away for decades. And the disappointment that they felt when he was beheaded. And then when the one that he actually pointed to that did all these miracles, that guy ends up being gutted on a cross. And then some freaky people who followed him ran around saying, oh, he's not dead. And I totally get it. I get it. We should all understand why people don't believe. But he did rise from the dead. And that testimony has been so powerful. That, that story and God's Holy Spirit resonating with our spirit when we give ourselves an opportunity to believe. He confirms it supernaturally in our souls and we begin to open up the Bible and realize oh it wasn't just Zechariah is not prophesying the end in 30-ish years from that day he's prophesying an end that is out there two three thousand ten thousand years could be tomorrow who knows so there is a strong hope for a bright sunrise. So, remember your uh, remember your uh, missionaries. Spend some time looking at some pictures from the images that you see there that give you more activity up here and in here. And uh, yeah, God bless. Uh, God bless our family and friends who make us cookies. Anyway, keep walking. God bless. Bye-bye.